Visual research. There is a long tradition of using photography and film in ethnographic research. There is a tradition of using photography in documenting social conditions. Even so, the use of photographs in film, and later video, remained as rather marginal research methods. Digitisation means taking photographs and videos, storing them and sharing them has never been easier. The global spread of the mobile phones with cameras has also changed the way we record and engage with the world. We can share our pictures through networking sites and via email. The realist assumption is so pervasive in our society that it is sometimes difficult to challenge it. If you look at a computer game, and most films, what we see is an overwhelming idea that they have to be as real as possible. This is the same thinking that is driving the development of 3D films and now 3D TV. There are all kinds of tricks and conventions that underpin this too, as in documentaries for example, when it appears that there is one person present and they are talking as if we are directly present. What we don't see are the film crew, the sound engineers and everyone else to show them would spoil the illusion. This is quite a famous example taken in the 1920s. After Stalin came to power, Trotsky on the right of the picture was forced into exile. Subsequent versions of the picture excluded him. What some people forget is that while a camera is pointing in one direction, it is of course not pointing in another. So photographs and videos do not and cannot record all. All pictures, just like field notes, are selective. When we take a picture, we are making decisions that may involve aesthetic concerns as much as anything else. Images are produced and interpreted through forms of tacit knowledge. There are many different kinds of photography, and certain things may be ignored as subjects. Assumption that photography bypasses human agency and removes subjectivity because it is a purely mechanical process. It is convention that enables us to see photographs as a true representation of the world. As well as rendering three dimensions into two, they also freeze the fourth dimension of time. Nonetheless, photographs have the capacity to document in a way that writing cannot. As such, they isolate specific events from the flux of our experiences. And by doing so, allow us to scrutinise a particular place or instant many times over. The following photographs were taken in the Gambia. They are part of a sequence that shows someone preparing green tea. This is a widespread and semi-ritualised custom. Green tea is boiled up with sugar and drunk from small glasses and is shared between family and friends. Although they have limitations, photographs and videos have the capacity to record detailed information. This is a very important point. Refer back to the pictures from Gambia. On their own, it is difficult to know what is happening unless you were already familiar with the ways in which green tea is prepared. In the Lenin photographs, you need to know the history, otherwise why one person has disappeared would not make sense. Photo and videos then need a narrative framework in which they can be interpreted. Gold, 2007, uses photography as one aspect of his research methods in the study of immigrant communities. Pictures can be used as the basis for interaction with his informants. How they view the images can reveal information that interviews might not have. This technique is known as photo elicitation. User-generated images where the research subjects are asked to take pictures. Gulamin and Drew 2010 use what they termed photo voice to examine the experiences of young people with chronic medical conditions. Such an approach requires the active involvement of participants and as such can be empowering. There is a lot of confusion among people about taking and owning photos and videos. The points outlined here are for guidance only, but sketch out some of the more important issues. Problems with anonymity and confidentiality are not really any greater with visual data than written data. Often confused with ideas of ownership and permission and under UK law, the person who takes the photograph owns it. You do not need permission to take a photo in a public place, to take a photo of a building, or to take a photo of private property from a public place. You need permission if you are on private property, such as shops or in a shopping mall. Some public buildings, such as museums and art galleries, do not allow photography, but some do.
Photos and videos are useful but underused research tools within the social sciences. We need to be aware of the conventions of both taking and interpreting images, such as the problem of showing and not telling. And ethical issues are less understood, but no greater than those involved with other forms of recording.